Hi, everybody. So excited to be here and so glad that you joined. We've got a big crowd with us, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, as you see, our topic is understanding and responding to dementia related behaviors. And Debbie may have sent you a workbook, and you can refer to that. If you don't have the workbook, it's fine. You don't really need it, but it's always good to, to have to kind of reference if you want. Um, like I said, you don't really need it. But so this particular presentation is an interactive presentation, and I really like it because who doesn't like to be kind of interactive when you're when you're listening to a presentation, right? So we have five different vignettes in this uh, particular uh, presentation, and it's the story of a, a very common um, form, form, very common forms of dementia related behaviors when we're going to be talking with we're going to be talking about Anne and her husband Bill and their family so Anne is the one that has has Alzheimer's so and also in this presentation uh, there's going to be some some other tips and things like that to uh, kind of guide you so we'll go ahead and get started so by the end of this program um my goal and, and the, the Alzheimer's Association goal is for you to be able to identify common triggers of behaviors associated with dementia. So I don't know, and I know a lot of you guys are caregivers and I don't know if, if you have someone with dementia, but a lot of times um, when you have a, a person with dementia, the behaviors come about and it's very unexpected and it's very, especially if they, if they haven't had these behaviors before. So it's, um, it's very disheartening and it can be very hard on a caregiver. Um, so that's something that's kind of a shock, right? Um, to, to someone that's never had behaviors before. Um, so we'll be able to explain the process for assessing, identifying and um, identifying the challenging behaviors. So this program is gonna give you different steps to look for and, and maybe even a reassess for next time um, if those things didn't work out because we all know that Sometimes things just don't work out when it comes to understanding and responding, right, to these behaviors. And then we'll be able to list the strategies, the strategies to address the common dementia related behaviors. And you know, this also this program is so wonderful because folks that have been caregiving for a while maybe can offer some tips or can give us uh, some information about what they've done um, to help particular situations. So with the triggers, you think about, goodness, what, what is gonna trigger someone to act this way? So if you get in, in your mind, you think about maybe yourself, if, if you're tired or if you've had a bad day or if, um, if you're too hot, so you're able to express that, you're able to tell someone and you're able to, in your mind, say, this is how I feel. Well, someone with behaviors and, and, and with, with the Alzheimer's and behaviors come about um, with the dementia and Alzheimer's, they're not able to, to really tell you at certain stages. So a lot of times that it may be because of pain, discomfort, maybe they're bored, uh, maybe fear, and uh, maybe sometimes they think that they're somewhere that they don't recognize where maybe they think in their mind they're a child and maybe you know, of course, they're an older adult now, and they look around and they don't realize where they are. It's a very scary, um, very scary thing to think about. And then even just tasks, doing different tasks that, that may be in the past was simple, and maybe it's just very frustrating now. So that the first thing you want to do with, um, if, you, if you see these behaviors, and the first thing you want to do is you want to detect and connect. And this is the first step. Um, so in each of the vignettes we'll go through, we wanna detect and connect. So join the person's reality and try to see the world through their eyes. So is this something that, you know, with your caregiving experience, um, is this something that, that, you, that you've had to do? Um, joining into their reality. It's really hard to step out into our reality and join their reality. Uh, it's very hard to do that especially when you're overwhelmed with caregiving and working and other family members, um, it's hard to do. So 
understand the person's reality in context to who was around, what happened, where did it happen, when, what time of day, night, um, early morning, or how, and then what took place before, during, and after the behavior. Um, so there's a lot, it seems like a lot, all these who, what, where, when, what, how, but it, it will it will come together. You'll you'll be able to um, all these steps. You don't have to go through and and check off, check off, check off. It will just automatically come together uh, when you're when you're in the mix of it. So and then always remember, and I know this is something easy to say. Always uh, approach the person calmly and respectfully. Easy to say, right? Especially if you've been married for fifty years and you've always done things a certain way. Um, but it's always to remember that. The way you approach someone is definitely going to bounce back to you. Um, so if you are portraying a very frustrated um, person or just upset, it, they're going to portray that back to you. So the second um, is, is the most important, and it's a vest and it address the physical needs first. So is there any medical issues? Are, are they hungry? Are they thirsty? Or, or um, they need social interaction, of course, with all of um, our pandemic this past, it feels like years, but it's been a couple, it's been a year and I think almost a year and a half, I think. Um, so of course that's been affected with, with um, us and with, with, with our loved ones that have uh, dementia and Alzheimer's. So that's definitely something that, um, is just to think about what what are some things that 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 are causing this behavior, and maybe environmental triggers, maybe maybe causing some discomfort, uh, maybe too too hot, too cold, too bright, uh, maybe music's too loud, people are too loud, maybe too many people talking um, is distracting. Um, so those are just some things to think about. And like I said, you guys, if you're caregiving, you probably can come up with a lot of different things too that you could share with us. And then you wanna address the emotional needs. This is the third step. And you wanna focus on the feelings and not the facts because we all know that if you try to talk reality to folks with dementia and Alzheimer's, they're not going to, um, it's not gonna go well. Um, so really just if, Maybe they're, they're searching for to feel safe or to feel um, like maybe they're sad. Maybe they just want to feel loved um, and just kind of reassure them and, and comfort them and um, validate their feelings. And then use your knowledge. So if you know the person really well, if, you're, if, if, if it's someone that you're, uh, you're, this is mainly for people that are caregiving for their their loved ones, if it's their parent or their auntie, uncle, um, it's really good to know as much as you can about them so that you can have effective interventions. And also redirecting the energy to, to the to a more soothing activity. I mean, you know, you just think about um, maybe directing them to another, maybe a very calming activity that would uh, kind of address this behavior, this kind of, um, this behavior that they're, they might be feeling due to the um, emotions that they're feeling. And Rose has a really good, uh, she's, her mother has, has Alzheimer's and she's um, uh, a caregiver. So uh, maybe you guys would um, uh, identify with some of the things that she's saying. she was part of the family you know she'd fold towels and she'd fold towels all day long some days just you know put them back in the basket and then she'd give them to her here's some more towels and it sound it may look sound like it's cruel but look it kept her busy it kept her movements going it kept her you know just kept her occupied and it kept and it made her feel um, wanted and that she was contributing we created a routine for her that worked for her around her agitation and, you know, her sleep patterns. So every day she was in the same routine for the most part. And every day she did something. She was always in the kitchen every day helping do something. Sometimes she'd rinse dishes. But she was always near the kitchen sink because she spent most of her life in front of the kitchen sink. 
Now she was just doing it in different ways. And, um, yeah, going for a walk, going out in the car for a drive, uh, walking around the yard, you know, um, watering plants. Those are all things that she did, and we just had her continue doing them. Yeah, I think about that. Um, I have uh, several years ex of experience working with long-term care, and I worked social worker as, as long-term care um, in nursing homes for several years. And um, one of the things that was pretty common, folks that, that were nurses in the past and they were residents there and they had some, some dementia, a lot of times they would still feel like they were working. So um, you would find them sitting at the nurse's desk answering the phones at times. <laughs> and we, we, we don't sometimes didn't realize that they were there answering the phone, but it was just what they were used to. And, and, and a lot of times we would get a phone that was not uh, working and let them have the phone there and, and to make them feel like they were still um, having some kind of autonomy and just having that, um, that feeling of, of being valued. Um, so yeah, that was good advice. But uh, so then the fourth, the fourth step is to reassess the plan for next time. Um, if that plan didn't work, which sometimes things don't, and then oh, a lot of times plans may work for a couple of months, and then then you got to move on to something different because we are all complex people, and we are complex. Folks with dementia, Alzheimer's are very complex, so but sometimes you have to go back and kind of figure out what to do. Um, and it's always good to have help. It's always good to have, just to know, it's always good to have help with with getting these ideas. That's why it's good to have a support group. And we have we have very, we have so many support groups on this island. We also have on other islands too, but there's four right now. And it's always good to have friends and people that you can kind of go through this with and um, kind of hash out things and get frustrated. So. Our, our support groups are wonderful. If that's something you'd be in interested in, we would love to have you. And then again, just remember to join the person's reality and what went well and what didn't, and how can you make adjustments? All right. And so now we're going to talk about the vignette. The, the vignettes, we have five vignettes, and they are very common. I'm sorry, I think my internet's unstable. I'm sorry, I think my internet's unstable. Is, there, is everything okay? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. You froze for a little bit, okay. but it's working now. Okay, so sorry guys. Bear with me. <laughs> so as I said, these are vignettes and it's Anne, Anne and her husband, Bill, and her family. And Anne is a 75-year-old woman with Alzheimer's. And she's, this is, this is the situation in her house. She's pacing the hallways in her house and evening saying, I need to go, I need to go. She would stop for walking. She would not stop for walking, not even for meals. Her family would give her sandwiches to eat while she was walking. She used a cane, but she was also getting blisters on her feet and she had lost weight from not eating. Her family would ask Anne to sit down, but as soon as she sat down, she would immediately get up and start pacing it again. Just a side note, Anne worked for 40 years as a nurse on the night shift and her agitation began every evening. And also her shoes were worn and she appeared to be in pain as she walked. So keeping Anne's situation in mind, I would love if you could put in the chat section or maybe even question and answer section. I'm not sure which one we decided on, Debbie. Uh, maybe you can use the chat feature. Um, so we'll chat see feature, that. okay. And then so put in the chat feature, what, um, what comes to your mind for detect and connect? Yes, it looks like um, she's 
she wants to do her rounds as a nurse. Yes, Nick. And hello, Nick. <laughs> Nick is um, in uh, Hawaii. He's on Hawaii Island. And he is works with the Alzheimer's Association. Okay, and so Christina, her feet are probably sore and she might want shoes since they're worn. Yes, I would think that would be that's like, ooh, that's, that's when you think about addressing physical needs first, ooh, that would be, um, I don't like having uncomfortable shoes. So, um, and she's not able to tell people, her her love, her, her husband or her, her, her daughter that she's having pain. And then Grace says um, her body and mind thinks she's still at work mm -hmm. and new shoes would be in order. Exactly. And get her some of those good, comfortable nursing shoes, right? <laughs> Does anything else come to mind when you think about Grace? I'm sorry, Grace. <laughs> sorry. When you think about Anne. I think those are really good because she did work as a nurse for 40 years. She's, she's at night. And she she thinks she's a, she thinks she's probably um, still working and um, maybe even just having a some kind of um, clipboard or something like that to have when she can have her hand make her feel like she's back in back at work. Okay, and then try a wheelchair to see if pushing her for a while can calm her down. That might be something, yeah. And direct her task at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are all really good. Um, the, the first thing that we want to do is just and like and like we did was try to get into her reality and her reality is maybe she thinks she's, she's a nurse, so that's good. And the second was address physical needs and we definitely see that she is um, having pain and we want to get those new shoes for her. And uh, I would think where she's, she's not eating I'm thinking maybe um, she she needs to um, have some. Her, maybe her husband can kind of fix a, a up a place and uh, instead of just having it a regular sit down, maybe having it come more fancy or something. I don't know. This is where you kind of have to kind of be creative and try to figure out different things to um, to remedy a situation. And I do see I do see a uh, question here about the new medication. We'll answer that at the end. Um, that's a good question. Yeah, thank you, Debbie. All right. And anything else pop up about the physical? And what about her emotional needs? Any, anybody have any ideas for that? Oh yeah, Grace says more frequent smaller meals. Yeah. After getting her comfortable shoes, let her talk, chat to family and caregivers about anything. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a lot of like I said, it's it's trial and error, right? It's just, and that's why I'm asking you. We want to, I want your help with this, and um, it's it's just trying to come together and find it, find an answer, and what works for Anne. Um, you know, she's she's feeling she's feeling restless and upset, um, and maybe. Bill, her husband, maybe he could try to comfort her in some way and, um, to meet her emotional needs. Um, that might be something maybe she just needs to be um, approached calmly and just just kind of uh, given a hug. Maybe she needs a hug. I know it's simple, um, but maybe she just needs that comfort um, to feel to feel that she so that she her anxiousness anxiousness might go away. Anything else? Maybe we could have her do a different activity. Um, maybe looking at pictures of family or in role play, have her do a simple. Yeah, that's good. Role play is really good. Um, maybe simple um, blood pressure readings. Yeah. Now, um, anything else? I think these are awesome. So hopefully those worked. And if not, we can reassess for next time. Oh, I like that. Tell her that she needs to have a break. Exactly. Oh, that's good. Tell her she's doing a great job as a nurse. Oh, that's so good. That also meets her emotional needs. Um, and I like the fact that you need that she needs to have a break. <laughs> um, 
to sit down. So we don't know how long that will that sit down will last, do we? All right, so these are great. We're gonna we have another vignette, and this one is confusion and suspicion. Um, just wondering if you guys have have experienced this if you're caregiving, and these are very very common um, situations with with these vignettes with Anne. So let's uh, let's read what the vignette says about confusion and suspicion. So when Anne's family comes to visit, evening begins. So that's that's something that um, to note. And she becomes very suspicious that people are trying to get into her house and watching her through the big picture windows. She becomes suspicious of her family for not making the people go away. And she thinks they must be all in cahoots with each other. Now, as a person, as, as Anne, I would think that she just feels so hurt, right? Um, and that's the first thing that I think of. So tell me what you think when you, when you de to detect and connect, what are some things that you, that you think is going on here? Yeah, sundowners may be a possibility. She doesn't need, she doesn't feel safe and she needs reassurance. Yes, these are very good. And what do you think as far as the physical uh, layout of maybe the, the windows and it's at night, maybe she's seeing a reflection of people. And what do you, maybe what do you think about that? Yes, when we're talking about physical needs, uh, Monica says maybe she's dehydrated. Uh, yeah, that's definitely something that it could be a possibility. When you think about also the environment, you think about maybe closing. Yes, closing, Grace says closing the um, drapes uh, because she's seeing that reflection and it's very scary. She's not able to understand that this is reflection. Um, and it's hard for us to understand that, right? But for her, she's seeing people outside and it's very scary. And so that's something that in, in her reality, it's, it's, it's very frightening for her. And she thinks, uh, she thinks her family is out to get her. So it's really, really, really sad that she's, that she's feeling this, but, um, and then, uh, perhaps too bright overstimulation yep and um, maybe she's seeing people right um, and sometimes it could be the fact that um, maybe it's it's a hallucination uh, and in this case when she when we close the blinds hopefully that will work and and again it's trial and error and um, and maybe uh, just kind of redirecting to something to, to different, something different. And when when you say, when we address her emotional needs, um, what are some things you think that, that you might you might do to address those? <clears throat> yeah, I just think just comforting her and telling her that um, that you love her and that you're with her. Um, I actually had, I did this um, presentation. I've been doing it for a while, but I thought one presentation was, or one lady that had spoke up during the presentation, she was a nurse and she said, well, what I would do in, or in order to address her emotional needs is just take her outside and try to find the people that are in cahoots to get her. I thought that was really funny and really creative. Um, yes, not just in this dismissing what she's worried about. Yes, to her, it's very real. Yes, that's an important note. Um, not saying, oh, that's not true, that's not true. It's, it's very real to her because it would escalate the situation possibly, um, but maybe not. You know, it's just different, who knows? Um, so yeah, I think just, uh, just saying, just validating her feelings and saying, I know you're scared, but we're here. We're not, we're not out to hurt you, we're here and everything's fine. Yes, very good. 
I like these comments. These comments are wonderful. Thank you so much for, for giving these comments. So reassess and plan for next time. So hopefully those work. Um, if not, then keep trying, right? So the third common behavior is aggression. And um, this is one of, uh, one of my, the most interesting vignettes. And if you've already, if you have the workbook, you'll see what I mean. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and read it and, um, and you can tell me what you think. So, Anne's husband Bill is standing at the back of the room, leaning against the wall with his arms crossed watching television. Anne walks in and tells him sharply, you're not the boss here. Bill ignores the comment and continues to watch television. Hmm. Anne comes closer, raises her voice and says, you can't tell me what to do. When Bill doesn't respond, and of course he's ignoring her, right? He thinks that's the best way to do it. Anne comes up to Bill and hits him, and this is a shock, hits him on the arm with her bald fist. So just a note, prior to her dementia, Anne was calm and she would never have, have done this before. Um, and lately her outbursts have become more frequent and she continues to come at Bill. And then what he does is he locks himself in the bathroom. Um, because he doesn't want to avoid, he doesn't want to have any more fights with her and he doesn't want to deal with it. Um, and he doesn't have a cell phone. So and this is just a note that is on here that's um, is something to think about. Since both of them were avid hunters when they were younger, there were guns in the house. But thank goodness, Bill has removed all the inhibition. So that's something to think about too. Um, and, and it's very unfortunate. I don't, know if, I don't know if you've ever heard on the news of, of someone in their 80s shooting someone and, and, and harming them. And, a lot of times my first thought is like, oh my gosh, did they have dementia and they had guns in the house? I, that's my first thought. And, um, and it's not because they're just mean old, mean old people, right? Maybe they have dementia and there was guns in the house. So um, thank goodness Bill has removed all, those, all the animation though. Um, so let's just go back and kind of look at the situation and, and detect and connect and join Anne's reality. Anybody got any ideas about maybe what's going on with Anne? Oh, that's really good. Yes, maybe she feels threatened by his body language. That's very good. A very good, um, very good to note that because I think that's a lot of what's going on here. And also, maybe the TV, maybe he's watching news and gosh, if you're watching the news, that could definitely, yes, somebody, Grace says definitely the TV and even the noise, the TV with the noise, it could be a trigger, but gosh, you think about everything going on in the news and, and all the, just the traumatic things that are happening, that could be very, very hard for Anne. And Again, the way he, the way her husband bless his heart, he is standing and um, he's kind of just standing back there like, mm, I don't want to deal with you, right? That's, that doesn't make her feel good. Um, maybe she is triggered by something, maybe like a, a previous fight, maybe an argument someone said. So yeah, these are all really good. And um, I think the first thing that comes to my mind is she's the way he's come the way he's kind of ignoring her and just not helping her and not giving her any uh, validation. It's making her feel um, upset. So he could really Bill, Bill could really use some good education on how to deal with with Anne. Maybe he could come to one of the Alzheimer's Association Effective Communication Strategies class. Um, that would help him. And also being in a support group would help him um, with other folks. 
And yes, Grace says his domestic action is not the most comforting. So um, I think just to text and connect, we realize that um, she is uh, very, feeling kind of alone right now um, and upset with her husband. And so addressing the physical needs first. So the physical, we would think about maybe the TV that's, that's uh, having some kind of interaction with Anne that makes her think things are not the way they are. Um, she's not able to, may not be able to understand reality. Um, physically, let's see what else. Um, she, she may be having some kind of um, medical something going on. We, there's so many things that, that it could be. Um, but for the most part, we, I feel like with this situation, it is the way that they are in, interacting with each other. And um, we think about emotional needs. So what is it that, uh, it, that needs to be done in your opinion that, that Bill needs to do instead of locking himself in the bathroom? <laughs> and that's, gosh, I mean, that's so, to me, that's such a real, real story, right? I mean, he doesn't know what to do. He's doing his best. He's had a hard day. He's done, he's done this over and over and over and over again. And he loves his wife, but he just, he doesn't know what to do. So locking himself in the bathroom is what he's chose to do for right now. And it just escalates um, the situation. Someone said, Bill needs to talk with her and listen. Yes, and acknowledge her. Yes, he does. And, and I think a lot of it is just Bill understanding what he needs to do and understanding a class like this and understanding that this is her reality and, and trying to step into her reality and see, see what is, is happening from her end. And it's pretty simple if you think about it, but in the moment when you're upset like Bill, it's 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 so hard to do and um i think what she needs is like as just like monica said in the chat is just to acknowledge her and validate her and maybe instead of crossing your arms maybe just uncrossing your arms and maybe just very calmly hugging her and telling her that you love her and just as uh, ashley says taking a moment to breathe and you know he needs to take a moment, right? He needs to take a moment and breathe. And 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 he's just so overwhelmed. And this is so very common, I'm sure, with with a lot of folks. But um, and just take him a moment, a moment for himself too. And Monica says it's hard to do, though. Yes, it is hard. And don't beat yourself up if you don't get it right every time. Um, you know, we're, the Alzheimer's Association has so many resources that we can help and like caregivers. So we're here to help um, too, so. Yes, uh, Lori says, um, I agree with Monica, hard to do after a long day when someone is accusing you and judgmental, we are human too. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and especially if it's, if it's your, your mom or your husband and you kind of go back to, to when when things were dementia was not at play right and you go to back to that reality and of course they're not in that reality so it's hard to do it's hard to do and we'll speak on that in just a minute i think rose one of the caregivers in this vignette talks about that so um it's very 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 common to feel that way and i think this may be it let's see On the tough days, my husband and I would switch off, uh, and my mom had forgotten all her English and had gone back to speaking only Greek, so she just spoke Greek, and my husband doesn't speak Greek, so it was perfect. So when she was agitated and she was cussing and yelling and saying all kinds of obnoxious things, my husband couldn't understand, so to him it didn't matter. So when she was in that mode, we'd switch off, and you know he'd take her for a drive, She'd stare out the window, eat fries, and she'd be fine. And it would give me a break to really decompress from some of the stuff she was saying that I know she was just saying under words, but, you know, I'm a human being as well, and I was taking them personally. Yeah, it feels good to know that you're not alone, right, with these 
um, these emotions and feelings on your end. And um, it was nice to have help that her husband, Rosie's husband was able to help her. And the fact that, you know, he didn't speak Greek. So that was, that was another plus. So hopefully you, you are able to, to have people that can um, come in and, and help you and, um, and maybe even a respite program, anything like that. Um, so yeah, if there's, if there's something you're interested in, um, let, let me know. Um, and so we think about aggression and usually aggression is associated with, um, they're, they're not that dangerous. Now, in course of, you know, when you have the guns and all that, that's definitely something to uh, be worried about. Um, so if the person is in danger to themselves or others, and safety measures are necessary. So these are all pretty much common sense, but um, also just think about maybe there might be something medically going on, um, just talking to the doctor about it and finding out what could be help if there's anything medically that's going on. And of course we know to um, call 911. Repetition is really one of the most common and also um, frustrating uh, behaviors for caregivers. It's important to really just um, take a minute, take a breath, and really think about how you could help that person with the answer that they're looking for. Um, it really makes no sense to sort of bump heads with them and try to correct them or try to tell them to stop asking it because they really can't remember that they just asked you that a minute ago. So thinking about how you could provide an answer that's reassuring, even though you might be doing it over and over and over again. Hard to do, right? It's um, hard to do. So um, the next vignette is about Anne again, and this is as, as we were saying earlier about repetition. So Anne has recently been concerned about her upcoming visit from her daughter. Though her daughter Katie is not scheduled um, to visit for another two weeks, Anne has begun to repeatedly ask her husband Bill when she will arrive. Anne has asked several times throughout the day which has begun to wear on Bill. I mean, understandably, right? He finds himself answering impatiently, which, I mean, it's easy to do, right? It's, 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 this is hard. And then he ignores her questions. But also, just a note, at the same time, Anne has been going to the bathroom much more frequently than she ever has before. She's going every 10 to 20 minutes. So when you detect and connect, what are some things that you note? Yeah, Grace says UTI. Yes, I would definitely um, Get, get the doctor involved because it does sound like this is this is going on with UTI definitely and she she's anxious and excited about her daughter, daughter's coming she's so excited about her daughter coming and and this is definitely something that um, the medical condition right that grace says is 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 aggravating her so it's it's kind of making the situation a little bit worse and then also with bill and how he's um Ignoring her too, that may add to to this to the the whole situation. So we detected and connected. We realized that she's she's anxious and excited about her daughter coming, and then physically, it's the fact maybe that she does have a UTI and there's something medically going on. Um, oh yes, I like this uh, calendar to help Bill and Ann track. So. Maybe if Bill could have a calendar, a big calendar up and says so he just has it circled the day that she's coming and then today is a certain date. Um, so that way she could look at that calendar. And again, this is just trial and error. So that may work. And if it doesn't work, then you try something else. But I think that that's a really good, um, it's a really good idea to, to have a calendar so that Ann can look at it. And you know, just with Bill, um, the way that he is answering impatiently and those type of things. I just still think Bill needs some kind of outlet and maybe he needs a support group. Maybe he needs um, someone that understands what he's going through and someone that can help him um, to, 
to know that the that the way that Ann is behaving is pretty common. Um, and yeah, just have, have folks around him that he can identify with and, and help him understand that this is a, a very common um, situation for them. I think that would have really helped him. Hello. Um, okay, one more, what was that? I thought the calendar was a good idea, but also, but I also but found that in use, it didn't help unless the person consistently remembered to look at the calendar. Yep, she would keep, and that's the thing. It may work, it may not. So just, but it never hurts to try and um, it may work for, you know, a month and then, uh, and then maybe not anymore. So um, it's always good to, I'm so glad that you mentioned that, um, Jenna, because you can, you can do things and they may not work. And, and just because they don't work doesn't mean that, you know, someone else, it may work for someone else. So um, these are very good comments. Thank you so much for putting these in the chat section. And so we're going to move on to wondering, and this is the last one, the last thing yet. And 60% um, of people uh, with dementia will wonder, and it can happen at any stage. So uh, just at this at this point, I want to make sure that you guys know that there's medical alert bracelets um, that if you're not aware of them already, um, they're really really good for folks that have Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, and in, in any case, they, they have their name on them and, uh, and identification so that if, um, if they were to, to be out and, and not know who they are, um, people would know that too, like the uh, police officers or the ambulance would know that they need to look at the uh, bracelet to, to know who they are. And sometimes people won't wear the bracelets and there are other options. And if you're interested, um, I can help you with that. So, but before that, um, let's hear what Beverly has to say. I, I absolutely love this lady and um, I love the way she, she ex expresses herself and talks about her relationship with her husband. Later in, uh in this journey, and I call it a journey, uh, he decided that he was going home to his wife. And one New Year's Eve, he looked out the window and there was a house down the street that had all the lights on and he decided that that was his house. And it must have been, I'd say at least two below zero. And he was going to leave. I had a double lock on the door, but I had left the key in and he decided he was leaving. And I said, well, Amos, I'm your wife. No, you're not. My wife is waiting for me. And he would laugh when I said that I was his wife. So he got up and I said, Amos, I'm going to call the police if you walk out the door. And Amos, in his usual manner, said, you do what you have to do. And he walked out the door. Well, he walked out in his house shoes two blocks down the street, and I got in the car and drove around. It just so happened that it was a neighbor's mother, and she knew what was happening, and she talked to him, and we got him back in the car and drove him home. How many of you guys have experienced something similar? Um, and thank goodness for, for good neighbors and um, good Samaritans. Um, so something to think about. Uh, so that is another common form of dementia, the dementia related behaviors is wondering. And so let's talk about Anne and her family real quickly. And like, this is the last, the last thing yet. And then we can answer questions, other questions that you have. So Anne and Bill spent their early years of their marriage in New Jersey. They moved out of the state into their current home 30 years ago. Anne constantly asks to visit New Jersey. She frequently leaves the home in the morning while Bill is showering and states, I'm going to New Jersey. She has, she's been found by neighbors on many occasions at their church on neighborhood streets. And at one time, she was found in a very busy intersection near their home. Their daughter, Katie, is quite worried about the potential injury. Bill is also worried and he's at a loss about what to do. 
just remember that Bill's logical and he tries to explain to her the reason why she can't um, visit New Jersey. And though he recognizes that his approach is not working, um, it does make Anne more angry and the wandering incidents also increase during those times. The text and connect. What is it that you see uh, in this situation with Anne's wondering? Yes, um, this is a this this one is a very uh, very common right, and unmet reassurance is is a good. Christina had said unmet reassurance maybe yeah, um, and you know it's this one is a very kind of one that that we deal with a lot with with folks that have dementia and um, a lot of times it's more more of a of not feeling comforted in their own surroundings and maybe just um yes someone says maybe she's confused why she isn't and like like i said she's she's not really understanding her new surroundings or to her new surroundings even though they've been there 30 years um so addressing uh, addressing the physical needs first well of course we want to make sure that she's not going to get hurt um, and she's been out many times and seems to go out every time Bill takes a shower. So maybe Bill could have a different time to take a shower. Um, also, maybe he could have some kind of um, system, maybe an alarm system. Um, and when she does try to leave, um, and uh, those are some, some things too that with the physical, uh, he, he could have maybe some kind of um, maybe a curtain on the door to maybe disguise the door um, so that she wouldn't leave. It just, it would just depend on, on if, you know, what stage she, or if she was, if it would work or not. So there's just a lot of different things that you could try in order to help her not um, leave. So that's the first thing you want to make sure that she's safe. Um, and then uh, emotional, she just, like Christina said, un unmet reassurance, um, you know, Bill is ignoring her. And he knows that this is not the right way to deal with it. Um, but maybe if he could just reassure her that uh, that they are that she's safe and that he's with her, and redirect uh, the maybe the the whole um, situation to maybe something like, well, tell me about what you loved about our house and and. Um, in New Jersey. Tell me about that. Tell me about what what it is. So maybe even just redirecting that to something that's more uh, happy for her. And it, she's wanting to go back there um, because she's 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 going. She's leaving. So maybe just talking about that. Maybe even finding some pictures of of their old house. Um, again, this is trial and error, and it's just trying to come up with things that will work. And um, also Emily Jorgensen, thank you so much, Emily, for saying this, but he does, he has care caregiver burnout um, and he needs to have some kind of, uh, if it's on a regular basis, maybe uh, he needs to make sure that he is um, taking care of himself in some way, um, maybe something that he enjoys um, by himself that he finds um, that he can get comfort from and also just joining a, a support group or having other people like him that know exactly what he's going through to help him. And um, yeah, so somehow Grace has a really good point. Somehow try to mimic in the new home what she loved about the old home. That's a really good, a good suggestion, definitely. Yeah, uh, so those, that's, that's really good. It's, it's, Again, it's just one of those things where it's good to have a lot of people um, 
in the care team to help you. And Bill definitely needs that. I think a lot of the issues are the way that Bill is responding to uh, to Grace. Sorry, <laughs> to Anne. And um, I think that's something important for us too to know that as far as caregivers, how are we responding and what are we doing in order to help us respond better? And are we taking care of ourselves? Because a lot of times you just get in that rut of taking care of everybody else and not of yourself. And it's so important to take care of yourself in order to care better for uh, your loved one. Let's see here. Um, and there is another, sorry about this. There's, this just kind of tells you about what we can do. Um, there is another um, talk that's going to, a guy that's going to say a quick, quick thing after this. So I don't want to forget about that. But um, so we have the Alzheimer's Navigator, which is really cool because it can help you from the very beginning of the process. So you're just beginning this whole new, um, as Beverly says, the caregiver, she says journey. And um, it helps you kind of navigate through through that. And then we have a community resource finder, which is really good if you're looking for maybe a physician, elder law attorney, you're looking for long-term care facilities. And in that community resource finder, we, all, we also list our classes that we offer and our support groups that we offer um, on, on Oahu and on the other islands too. Um, and then we have All's Connected, which is cool because it connects folks that have dementia or that are caregivers with everyone around the U.S. Um, that are, are kind of going through the same thing. So it's kind of like a support group too. Um, it's more of one of those chat room situations. It's um, a really good resource and very good therapeutic tool. And then Alzheimer's and Dementia Caregiver Center, we have that and it's just uh, a lot of the classes that we offer. Um, these are classes that are offered, um, but they're not interactive classes. And then Safety Center, we have, um, you know, a lot of times it's hard to stop driving um, to tell them when to stop driving. So this is another uh, another thing that we have kind of information on and then just different things about in your house, what kind of things to look out for. Um, we have that. And then an important phone number is um, the 24 seven helpline. And, and this is available all day, every day, Christmas day, you know, those days that we don't think about. Um, they're, the folks that answer the phone, they are master's level technicians and they can help with anything. Um, if you're having a crisis, they can help. Or even if you just need to, to know uh, um, just a simple, if you need a kind of a, anything like a, oh, who can I call, what doctor, and they can give you just different kind of information for that. For that. Um, and again, we have our support groups, education programs, and then um, we also have a, a free online education uh, training. So alls.org is how you get to all that. And it is a lot of stuff. So if you have trouble navigating through that, all of the information, because there's so much, please reach out and um, I, can, I can help you. And, okay, one more. I think this, uh, we, we got the, I, want, I don't want you to miss what this guy says at the end. So. Um, also, we have our walk uh, coming up November the 6th, and it is going to be in person, so we're really excited about that. Um, officially, we are able to meet in person uh, in August, so uh, for forever, we've been doing what I'm doing now. We're, we're doing Zoom, and it's been great, and we found that people are, are really liking this, this setup. People also want to be able to, to meet again in person, so we're excited that we can do that, too. Um, so they also have the longest day, which is another uh, really great fundraiser. That's a DIY fundraiser, and it is uh, actually on the longest day, which is uh, June the twentieth. So this is a really fun one that uh, if you like to get involved in DIY type things, it's good. And if you're interested in volunteering, we would love to have you. We have volunteers for for community resources getting community resources out there, especially with 
um, with things opening back up again and us being able to <clears throat> get out in person, we would love for, love for you to, to help us out with health fairs and those type things. And um, also with education programs and maybe even just giving an education program like I'm doing. Um, so it's, there's a lot of different ways you can volunteer with just really anything. And we have advocacy, you can volunteer with that and also the trial match. And <clears throat> trial matches is the trial matching service. So um, we need people in order to find a cure uh, for, for Alzheimer's. So we, we need people to be involved. So uh, that's something too, if you're interested in, you can uh, get on trialmatch.com. And here is Sandra. I believe this is the one I was thinking about. I thought it was Dr. Pierce. Everyone's situation, I'm sure, is different. You know, my mom was a, a shaker and a mover. She would do whatever needed to be done. She loved to cook. She can't cook anymore. You know, she loved to keep her house clean. She can't do that anymore. Um, and it's tough. I don't, I don't have all the answers. When she's sitting there and my dad's cooking, I don't always know what to do. I have to learn to be comfortable with that. And if I may say, that's a big part of this, learning to be really comfortable with your own limitations, learning to be comfortable with the fact that you don't know the answer, learning to be comfortable with you're in a situation and you think you need to give her something, but you don't know what it is. You're taking her around the flowers and she's not responding. You're taking her for a walk and she's really not there with you. I don't always know what to do, but I, but I try. That's very good advice <clears throat> and a very good way to end. <clears throat> and it looks like it's one minute to 11 and I'm so sorry. <clears throat> I didn't realize it was gonna take this long. No problem, thank you, Tanya. Um, that was a lot of great information. Um, if anybody has any questions, please type them in the Q&A box. Um, I know we are ending at 11, but let's just answer a few questions as I don't wanna leave folks hanging. Um, one of the questions we did get earlier is, um, I read that there is a new Alzheimer's medication that has been approved. Is it available by prescription or over the counter? And what is the name of it? It's right now, it is, it's aducaminin is the name um, of the uh, medication. And it is not available right now. Um, it's still kind of in the process, in the works. I know it's very expensive. It's uh, quoted as I think it was $56,000 a year and also through IV so every four weeks through IV um, and right now we think that that's extremely too much money so we're working um, on getting that lowered and, and trying to figure out um, what what to do in that case but it's it's not something that um, it's figured out exactly right now, but uh, we're just very, very excited because it's, it's just, um, it's kind of that hope we've, we've it's definitely not a cure, um, but in it, in it helps with uh, the plaques and the tangles. Um, that's the kind of the hallmark of Alzheimer's disease. Um, it helps get rid of those. And it's for mainly for people in mild cognitive impairment stage in the beginning. So it's very important to get, um, if, if you are wondering if you have uh, any dementia or anything like that, it's important to get an early diagnosis. 